Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers AVRE, also known as Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers is the title given to a series of armored military engineering vehicles operated by the Royal Engineers for the purpose of protecting engineers during frontline battlefield operations. In protecting engineers, the vehicles also became a mobile platform for a variety of engineering purposes, mounting large caliber weapons for demolition, carrying engineering stores, mine clearance explosives, a variety of deployable roadways, and modified engineering bridges for gaps that the related armored ramp carrier arc vehicles could not overcome. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Development history. Extremely high casualty rates among engineers was one of the primary reasons for the failure of the Dieppe raid of August 1942. Engineers were tasked with getting the tanks off the beach, destroying obstacles and building ramps. In the assault, the engineers were prone to gunfire while setting charges, and became a priority target for the defending forces. Those that did make it to the point where ramps could be built had lost much of their supplies on sunken landing craft. With tanks unable to leave the beaches, the raid stalled and failed. Following failure of the raid, a Canadian engineer attached to the Department of Tank Design proposed a vehicle to protect engineers during assault operations. Development commenced based on the experiences at Dieppe. Experiments used Churchill, Sherman and Ram tanks. The side door became a critical component for the new vehicle, allowing engineers to exit the vehicle under protection, and retreat back inside while blasting. In October 1942 a prototype based on the Churchill tank was ordered. The Churchill proved ideal, having a large amount of space inside for demolition stores, and side exit doors. The interior munition storage was removed, as was the turret basket and co-driver's seat, replaced with stowage. This provided space for 36 cubic feet of demolition supplies and tools. The turret, initially not required, was retained allowing a petard mortar to be added. The petard mortar was a separate development, firing a large demolition charge, the bomb demolition number no. I, that became known as the flying dustbin. Development on this began in September 1942 and was united with the Churchill turret following experimental use on a Covenanter tank. With plenty of space inside the Churchill, a number of flying dustbins could be carried in addition to the demolition stores. The petard was reloaded through a sliding cover that replaced one of the forward driver's hatches in the top of the hull. Together the vehicle was named Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers. Trials of the new vehicle were undertaken throughout 1943. Note that the vehicle was not known as Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers at this time. Production commenced in 1944 based on a mixed fleet of Churchill III and IV vehicles. These were assigned to three regiments of the Royal Engineers forming the new 1st Assault Brigade Royal Engineers, part of the 79th Armoured Division. The vehicles became the basis for a range of modifications and additions as part of Hobart's Funnies. <laughs> Nomenclature AVRE vehicles have been known by several different names through their lifespan. Secrecy over the meaning of the codenames given to Hobart's funnies in the lead into D-Day led many to refer to the AVRE simply as an engineer tank, most not knowing the AVRE name or what AVRE stood for. This led to confusion with other types of engineer tank, such as recovery vehicles. In October 1943 an Army Training Memorandum was issued removing the ambiguity in naming and defining the Assault Vehicle Royal Engineers name for all users. The majority of documentation continued to refer to the abbreviated AVRE or AVSRE in plural. Even the Churchill AVRE's own instruction book did not explain what AVRE stood for. With infrequent use of the full form, naming became confused. At the end of the war, the final report of the 79th Armored Division, the records of the Department of Tank Design, and the official history of the 1st Assault Brigade Royal Engineers, all use the assault vehicle terminology. The official history of the 79th Armored Division states, Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers, however, although notes that it was rushed into print. 
As the latter was provided to all members of the division, the armored vehicle terminology gained significant traction. The vehicles continue to be referred to primarily in the abbreviated AVRE form. When rarely defined, both the Churchill 7 AVRE and the Centurion AVRE became known by both assault and armored terms interchangeably, with the latter armored term becoming more common. Nomenclature settled on armored vehicle with the introduction of the Chieftain Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers. Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers has since become the accepted term, retrospectively applied to previous vehicles in most references. More recently, the AVRE designation appears to have been dropped from Trojan. Topic: Models. Topic: Churchill 3 and IV AVRE. Churchill AVRE was a Churchill III or IV armed with a 290 mm petard spigot mortar, officially designated, mortar, recoiling, spigot, 290 mm, MKI or II. The mount replaced the six pounder gun in welded turrets on the Mark III and cast turrets on the Mark IV, otherwise, the vehicles are identical. The six pounder gun mounting was modified and retained the six pounder sights, although, flying dustbin. Effective range was only around 80 yards of 230 maximum. Crew was increased to six to accommodate a demolition NCO in addition to driver, commander, gunner, wireless operator, and co-driver, machine gunner. Internal ammunition stowage and the co-driver, hull gunner's seat was removed to provide compartments for demolition charges. This housed stores of the General Wade, 26 pounds explosive charge, and Beehive. Charges of up to 75 pounds of explosive. Both types of charge had to be set manually, but could be detonated from the relative safety of the AVRE interior. In the remaining space, compartments in the sponsons were created for an AFT of the side hatches for flying dustbin ammunition. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Churchill 7 AVRE. Post-war, new Churchill AVREs were created using the Churchill 7 base vehicle re-armed with a short-barreled L9A1 165mm demolition gun. This fired a 64 pounds Hesch round. <laughs> Centurion Mk5 AVRE AVRE 165. FV-4003 Centurion Mk-5 AVRE Armed with a short-barreled L9A1 165mm demolition gun, it entered service in 1963, replacing the Churchill AVRE. The vehicle was later renamed AVRE-165 relating to its primary armament. The armament was capable of firing a 60 pounds high-explosive squash head round. The vehicle front added a dozer blade to the front, and frequently towed the giant Viper for mine clearance or other trailers for stores. Large turret bins provided stowage. The dozer attachment was also provided on regular tanks as the FV4019 Centurion Mk5 bulldozer. Centurion AVREs remained in use, and were up armored for Operation Desert Storm in 1991. Centurion Mk-12 AVRE AVRE 105 FV-4203 Centurion Mk-12 AVRE A modified artillery observation post vehicle, it was armed with the conventional 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 rifled gun and provided with track width mine clearance plows instead of the dozer blade on the Mk-5. Topic. Chieftain AEV and FV-4203 Chieftain AVRE Replacement of Centurion AVRE was planned to be accomplished by two new vehicles splitting the AVRE role, the Chieftain Armored Engineering Vehicle and Chieftain Armored Engineering Vehicle winch. 
both were to be multi-role vehicles capable of more than just the AVRE function. Chieftain AEV gun was to be fitted with a demolition gun, but was cancelled early in the design process due to budget constraints. Chieftain AEV winch continued in development and design evolved into the Chieftain ARV and two prototype gunless FV4203 Chieftain AVRE vehicles built in the early 1970s. FV4203 AVRE vehicles were almost identical to the Chieftain ARV, also based on the AEV winch, but added a dozer blade, bucket, deployable bridge, and the ability to launch a roadway. The project was cancelled in favor of completing normal engineering operations with the lightly armored Combat Engineer Tractor CET while retaining the Centurion AVRE in frontline service. The FV4203 AVRE prototypes were later converted for armored repair and recovery vehicle ARRV trials. Topic: <laughs> Chieftain CHAVRE AVRE With the introduction of Challenger 1, the Centurion AVRE was struggling to keep up, while military requirements needed a larger number of trackways to be carried. Surplus Chieftain vehicles could have the turret removed to reduce the vehicle weight, providing enhanced mobility even when loaded with engineering stores. Removal of the turret would also allow six Class 60 trackways or three fastens to be carried on top of the vehicle. The Chieftain tank based, Willich Chieftain AVRE. Entered service in 1987. This vehicle was designed by Captain D. Clegg Mbe Re. Twelve vehicles were built by 32 Armoured Engineer Regiment and 21 Engineer Base Workshop of the Royal Engineers under the direction of Lieutenant Col. J. F. Johnson Re based in the German town of Willich, hence its name. Some of these vehicles saw use in the First Gulf War. In 1989, a program was launched to convert a further 48 vehicles with prototypes arriving in 1991. The Chieftain CHAVRE AVRE entered service in 1994. 48 units were produced by Vickers Defense Systems. The CHAVRE nomenclature mirrored that of the Chieftain ARRV. CHARRV as distinguished from the Challenger ARRV, CRARRV. Each CHAVRE provided a 10-ton winch and Atlas crane for engineering operations, along with a trackway on top for multiple fastens or stores. It also fitted a dozer blade or mine plough, with no primary armament. CHAVRE was initially used alongside the Centurion AVRE. Topic: Trojan. AVRE functions have been combined with others into the Trojan Combat Engineer Vehicle CEV based on the Challenger 2 chassis. Trojan will be equipped with an articulated excavator arm, a dozer blade and rails for fastens. 33 units have been ordered from BAE Systems Land Systems. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Operational History. Churchill III and IV AVRE vehicles were successfully used to breach defences in the D-Day landings, and continued in use through the rest of the Allied advance to Nazi Germany. The petard mortar's ability to demolish obstructions and fortifications proved valuable to the Allied advance, while the morale impact of seeing the large gun caused many enemies to abandon their positions. AVRE vehicles were frequently teamed with Churchill crocodile flamethrowers for bunker clearance. The AVRE would crack the defenses, allowing the flamethrower to soak the interior with flammable liquid, forcing those inside to surrender. Centurion AVRE and Chieftain CHAVRE vehicles were both successfully used in Operation Granby in the early 1990s. Extended use of the Centurion AVRE made the Centurion tank, developed during the latter half of the Second World War, the longest serving military vehicle in the British Army. Topic. Attachments and accessories Topic. Demolitions The carrot provided explosive charges on metal prongs extended from the front if the vehicle 
These could be pushed up to an obstacle, released, and fired from within the vehicle, protecting engineers from the need to exit the safety of the armored vehicle interior. Onion built upon the carrot concept providing a much larger frame of explosives to blow a larger gap in concrete obstacles. Goat provided a similar frame of explosives to onion and carrot, but carried horizontally to allow a much greater charge to be carried. This was released by prongs extending from the front, allowing it to pivot into a vertical position before detaching from the vehicle. <laughs> Mine clearance. During World War II the Sherman Crab was the primary and most effective mine clearance vehicle for the 79th Armored Division, but AVREs carried a range of mine clearance devices to supplement them. A lane marker attachment could be fitted to the sides of the AVRE to delineate lanes through minefields or cleared terrain. Similar to the Sherman Crab, it deployed both tape and lights. Snake consisted of sections of 3 inches pipe filled with explosive to extend and then detonate across a minefield. The concept is similar to the Bangalore torpedo but Snake is much larger. Snake pipes run the length of the AVRE vehicle with multiple pipes carried on the traggards of modified AVREs. Once assembled together into longer lengths, Snake could be towed by the AVRE into position, and then pushed across a minefield. A shaped end was created for the snake to prevent it digging into the ground when pushed. Detonation destroyed the mines along the length of the pipe, forming a large path across the minefield. Conga was a similar device, providing a rocket-propelled flexible tube that was carried in, and launched from, a converted engineless universal carrier towed behind the AVRE. Once in position, the hose was propelled by an attached rocket across the minefield. The tube was pump filled with a special nitroglycerine based explosive known as 822C. The device was used operationally during the D Day invasions, but ceased operations after a disaster in the Dutch city of Ijazendijk, in which more than one ton of 822C detonated while being unloaded from two lorries. The explosion caused numerous casualties and destroyed four nearby AVREs, while the lorries disappeared. Giant Viper is a post -WW2 reworking of the Conga concept using a trailer and pre-filled, safer, hose and explosive. It was used with Centurion and Chieftain AVREs and other vehicles and saw use in the Iraq conflict with them. It has been replaced with the Python minefield breaching system. Anti mine plow was used to avoid cratering an approach and rendering it impassable to following vehicles. A number of types have been used. These push the mines to the sides of the vehicle where they can be dealt with later by sappers on foot. Alternatively, rollers like the Canadian Indestructible Roller Device could detonate mines ahead of the vehicle by applying a vehicle-like ground weight. These pivoted up on their mountings upon explosion before dropping back down to continue. <laughs> Tracks and roadways. Roly-poly and Bobbin both provided a track-laying roll in front of the AVRE over which the AVRE drove known as carpet laying. This provided a roadway over soft ground which the tanks would otherwise sink into. Roly-poly used steel roller shuttering while Bobbin used reinforced fabric matting. Both were used on D-Day. Log carpet provided an alternative formed of chain-linked logs. This was folded flat on raised supports over the AVRE with an explosive charge to release the front. The log carpet would then drop down in front of the tank log by log, with the weight dragging further logs from the top. Logs were robust, each, 14 feet long by 27 inches, diameter linked with 2 inches, wire rope. This proved a challenge to load, and log carpet AVREs had to be driven into a pit to enable the logs to be loaded at ground level. Log carpet could also be fitted to the unit's LVT 4 Buffalo amphibious vehicles, and was particularly effective on waterlogged ground. Class 30 and Class 60 trackways were later developments in the 1960s following extensive Cold War exercises in Germany, similar to Roly Poly. Topic. Bridging and gap clearance During World War II, the AVRE was provided with a platform allowing a fasten to be carried on the vehicle front while the turret was traversed through 90 degrees. 
This could be released from within the vehicle to drop into gaps and ditches, allowing tanks commencing with the AVRE itself to cross, or angle up and over a ridge. AVREs could also be modified with mounts and supports to carry a ready-assembled small box girder bridge from the front glacy plate. This could be dropped over gaps similar to traditional engineer bridging, or used to provide a ramp over a wall. Later, a towed version of the small box girder bridge was also developed, and was able to traverse a Bailey bridge for gaps further along the assault. A 60 feet section of Bailey bridge could also be pushed as the skid Bailey, with the leading sections raised slightly by winch to overcome obstacles. This allowed larger gaps to be breached. Trials and training were also conducted with the Bailey Mobile Bridge, providing 150 feet of bridge articulated on tracks at the center, and the Brown Bailey, carrying 140 feet of Bailey Bridge between two tanks, the rear AVRE launching the bridge over rollers on the front vehicle. Postwar a folding small box girder bridge was also developed, articulating in the middle. AVRE bridging can be distinguished from the armored ramp carrier arc by both purpose and operator. AVRE bridges leverage the AVRE to enable Royal Engineers to more safely accomplish traditional bridging activities where an arc may not be appropriate. The arc is intended to rapidly deploy a ramp or smaller gap bridge without the need for specialized engineering skill set, simply by driving into it. An AVRE deployed fasten could be used to raise the front of the arc if needed, such as ahead of large sea walls. Latterly ARC vehicles were used by the Royal Armoured Corps to undertake the Task Armoured Vehicle Launched Bridge AVLB bridge layer vehicles have replaced AVRE bridging in more recent years, although fastens are still carried for smaller obstacles. <laughs> <laughs> AVRE trailers An armored sled was provided for AVRE with droppable sides, allowing further engineering supplies to be dragged by the vehicle. Engineers also used gutted carrier based on the universal carrier or its predecessor vehicles, for the same purpose. These were stripped of engine and internals, and dragged using the same linkage used for Conga. Post-war, a dedicated AVRE trailer, designated Trailer, cargo, seven and a half ton, four wheeled, Centurion AVRE. Provided a cross country load carrying capability behind the AVRE. <laughs> <laughs> Related engineering vehicles Related vehicles provided dedicated bridging and mine clearance, becoming the Armored Ramp Carrier Arc, Armored Vehicle Launched Bridge AVLB, and Mine Flail Lobster, Crab vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> List vehicles deployed Mark I Tank Heavy Re Tank Variants Bridge Layer, a Mark V Tank, with Canal Lock Bridge Mine Clearer, a Mark V tank, with Mine Rollers Light Tank MKV. Bridge Layer, Scissors Assault Bridge Covenant A tank. Bridge Layer, deploying a Class 24 Scissors Bridge Valentine tank. Valentine MK2, deploying a Class 30 Scissors Bridge 5 180 Combat Engineer Tractor. 143 units were supplied, it entered service in 1977, providing earth-moving functions, shielder vehicle launched scatterable mine system, essentially a modified BAE systems land system stormer with the Alliant Tech Systems Volcano Mine Delivery System, 30 have been delivered Challenger variants. Titan AVLB, also based on the Challenger 2 chassis, the Titan Armored Vehicle Launched Bridge, 33 units have been ordered from BAE Land Systems Terrier CET. Currently in development to replace the FV-180. Substantial use of commercial off-the-shelf parts is part of the design of the vehicle, including a Caterpillar drivetrain C-18 diesel engine and an X-300 series automatic transmission and excavator. It also uses the alloy road wheels from the BAE Systems Combat Vehicle 90 program. The Terrier is armored using steel rather than the aluminium alloy of its predecessor. See also Hobart's Funnies Military Engineering Vehicle 
equals equals notes. <laughs>